They sit at the dirty tables in this dirty hole, wearing the short pants that show themselves. They smoke and laugh, and some of them seem frightened of their own police as they are asked one at a time into the front area to be questioned. Soon Basam will be as well. Twice he has checked his pockets and three times he has inspected his license to make certain it is the one from Florida, not Virginia, though his part will be activated in Massachusetts, a word he cannot say, only Boston, this he can say. Most of these young policemen are young like him. They believe they are strong, but it would be easy to kill them. He has learned so many ways to do it, hand to hand, knife to gun, gun to bomb. At the camp for training, he was best with small weapons, and there is the feeling he has been given a gift he will never use. Beside his table, two men laugh. On their fingers are the rings of wives. One of them wears a tie and shirt, his sleeves folded back to reveal a gold watch, and he smiles briefly at Basam, who does not return it, but he nods so as not to incite an argument, so as not to draw attention. A young policeman curls his finger to the businessman who jokes with the other and rises. Vasam must be permitted to leave soon. There is the drive back to the east. He should be there before sunrise for the first prayer. Amir is in the north now. But each dawn for days, the Egyptian has kicked his mattress and Tariq's mattress in the mattress of Imad. The time of living like the Kufar is over. Get up and perform your ablutions, my brothers. We must pray for strength. Prayer is better than sleep. Rise. The Jew owner moves among the tables, grasping his pot of coffee. He sees to the comfort of these people. He wishes to come back again and again. One of the whores, the white one with the red hair, follows with cream and sugar, and Basam allows the Jew to pour his coffee, though he will no longer touch the cup touched by the Jew. This hatred gives him strength. This hatred that was so pure and clear in the disciplined months in camp, the hatred that began to weaken in Dubai and has weakened further here in this Florida with its heat and all the women who each day show so much of themselves. Amir has moved them to many places, Delray Beach, Boynton Beach, Hollywood, Deerfield. The small room smelling of men and incense and the pizza they often eat, the empty boxes stacked upon the floor near the kitchen sink where they would perform their ablutions. But moving so much has kept them united. Basam and Imad and Tariq like one man now. A Shaheed with three heads, but one heart. One heart. With Amir they had enrolled the gymnasiums in each town. Places where the Kufar go to keep their bodies as well maintained as the Grand Dam and Le Mans and Duster Basam and his brothers had driven in their old nothingness. At the first one in Venice, because they knew nothing of lifting weights, the gym manager assigned them a trainer Amir ignored. He did not change into exercise clothing as the others did, but remained dressed in a collared shirt and pressed pants and leather shoes from Germany. He moved from machine to machine, pushing or pulling on whatever handles or bars there were to hold, sweating lightly, not speaking to or even looking at the woman trainer, Kelly, who tried to correct him. She was young, the age of Basam, Tariq, and Imad. Tariq, that habit of never closing his lips fully, which makes him look stupid, though he is not. He stared at her body you could see so easily in its tight gym clothing, her uncovered arms and legs, centimeters of her flat belly too. An Imad, tall, heavy Imad, who back home had told jokes and laughed which made everyone else laugh. Since the camps, he has grown quiet. His laughter turned to stone, and he listened to the young trainer talk as if deciding the most efficient way to kill her. But Basam liked her brown eyes her brown hair, how she had it tucked up into pins revealing her neck, how she smiled at him and touched his shoulder or arms or back as she instructed him. She was kind. He could see it and feel it. She was kind, as were so many others. Gloria, the real estate woman who found them their first apartment in Delray Beach. She was short and wore very much jewelry and lipstick, but she laughed at whatever she said and looked into Basam's eyes with hers, blue and smiling, and he felt liked by her, even though she did not know him. 
It made him want to sit with her, a kafir and a woman, and sip tea and tell her things he had never told to anyone. She asked them their names and tried to pronounce them correctly, though she could not, and she laughed at herself, squeezed his arm, and he could not bear being in her presence any longer. There was Cliff, the man at the fuel station store three blocks south, taller than Bassam. He was as old as his father, his hair colored blonde, his whiskers gray. Upon his arms were inked figures of naked women, and when Bassam came in for more milk or bread or cokes, he asked how his studies were coming. Was he having any goddamn fun? There were the women who served them food in restaurants, the young ones or older ones, the pretty or the ugly. They were polite and smiled while looking them in their eyes, except Amir's. Their smiles changed then. They could see and feel his hatred for them, and Bassam had felt soft and weak and not worthy of the title Shahid. These people should fear him too. He was prepared to do what he was chosen for. They must not doubt this. No one should question this. It had been months since their training, and now he and Tariq and Imad were back home. After the purity of camp, where daily they had fought hand to hand, where they fired the AK-47 while running, where they wired plastic explosives while reciting from Al-Anfal and Al-Tabah, where they fasted and cleansed themselves, and where their softness fell away like fat from a lamb, it was difficult being once again in the dusty and idle streets of Khamis Mashat. Karim and the others wanted to race, to smoke, to gossip, to stay baboons. Imad and Tariq had grown beards and tried to teach their old friends to stay away from these evils. But Karim, standing before them in his Nike cap and t-shirt and jeans, his shiny cell phone in his hand, he was already lost. For two years he had studied in London, something he was always boasting, and he showed them the photograph of the Zionist girl from Jerusalem who had loved him, his mind soiled, his heart falling to the west. Karim told them they should not believe everything the Imam said. Read the Quran, my friends. It says, Al Al-Kitab, the people of the book, Christians and Jews deserve respect because they are fellow monotheists. Have you read all the surahs? Because I have. Read 3, 113, 115. They believe in Allah and the last day. They enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong, and they hasten in the emulation of all good works. They are in the ranks of the righteous. And that is why they enslave the Palestinians, Tariq said. That is why they occupy our land and kill our brothers in Iraq. You have fucked a Jew. What can you tell us about anything? Go play with your cell phone. You are not going where we are going. Yes, Karim laughed. Have a nice trip. And he turned and walked away, the sun on his back, dust on the soles of his Nike shoes. Soon he would be an unbeliever, and after his death, he would walk the bridge over hell as all souls do. And Basam could only leave it to the most merciful to spare him from the fall to Jahannam. For Karim and the rest did not know who they were talking to. Shuhada, martyrs who would sit in the highest rooms with Allah, men whose names would never be forgotten. Thank you very much.